everyone. Welcome to today's edition of Why I've Got In. I'm your host, Scott Wynn, and we're here today to give you the tea on another amazing creative. I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to sit with a good friend of mine. She is a painter of Afro-futuristic art. She makes beautiful, large-scale pieces. She does live painting. Um, she's had the opportunity to do pieces at a Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta and a number of art shows. Uh, please join me in welcoming Kelly Free Spirit Johnson. So, oh, Kelly, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. Um, so, tell me a little bit about why you got into being a professional artist. I think that being able to express yourself is an essential part of the human experience. And really young, I found myself being attracted to colors and just knowing how to manipulate, you know, water and the paint to make it look really smooth. So once I knew that the images that I saw in my mind, I could put them on canvas, I knew that I had a gift and it was like my duty. You know, I feel like it was my responsibility to, um, become all that I could be and also help other artists see that, you know, by following your heart and following your vision, you can be a successful artist as well. So it's really exciting navigating the personal, uh, the professional, you know, artist world and just like learning the politics, learning uh, what works and what doesn't work at different shows. But uh, it's really exciting. I'm very excited about my journey and the people that I get to meet like you. Thank you so much for having me on here, friend. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely get that. And that's, that's the Kelly we get today. So I want to start off by who was uh, Kelly as a kid? Like, give me a little bit of your background, where you grew up, what yeah. was lifestyle around um, I was born in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I was a really happy kid. I was a really joyous kid. I found myself just always, I'm burning my rosemary here. I found myself just always, you know, exploring things and smiling, and I loved stories. Like, I loved movies, like Disney movies. I think I loved them more than the average person. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I just remember everything being so bright and colorful. And yeah, it was cool. I, I had a really dope childhood. I think my mom and dad provided me different opportunities for my creative growth. You know, I was always in the summer camps. I always right. went to those camps and I was always exploring and meeting other badass children. Um, but then also I liked my alone time. I think mm -hmm. that I noticed that something different was happening to me compared to other kids. So it'd be like rambunctious, you know, kids going on, you know, running around the playground. And I'd be, you know, on the side, like picking up a four leaf clover, you know, just, I just remember being very curious. Was to, what, what is the environment in Las Vegas like? Like uh, I grew up here in Atlanta. So okay. for me, it was, sort of a weird black mecca growing up like i didn't realize it at the time but like you know i was in all black schools um i was very visibly aware that everyone... so what area what area of atlanta did you go to school um i grew up in decatur so decatur okay not in like old decatur so like around south of cat moss uh Keller Road, Flash Road. okay 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 you're 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 atlanta for real yeah yeah, yeah for real so <laughs> I usually know because I'm like the only one in the room and when I'm not I'm like I have to know what school you went to because right that's that's how we know a real Atlanta person yeah but, um what was the environment like when uh you were growing up what were you seeing what type of images were you coming across that's a good question um you know my memory is interesting I remember certain things and some things I don't remember um, but I do remember the relationship that I had, like, with my toys. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 
I would play and I would get so lost, like, or I would just be alone somewhere, like in the swimming pool or anywhere. And I, and I would find opportunities to just dive into my imagination. And it was so comforting for me. Um, I think that being able to explore your mind as a child and being, being in an environment that is conducive to that, you know, a lot of kids are not able to be in an environment that's like peaceful. Sometimes it might be a lot of shit going on in the house or, um, you know, you might not be able to really relax and enjoy your childhood, but I, I can't say that I really did. And I'm really grateful that my mom and dad provided me, you know, everything that I needed. If I wanted a new book or if I, you know what I'm saying, wanted to explore a new place, a new theme park, I was always fed like my imagination was always fed. My creativity was always fed. And it's really important, I feel like, as a parent, you know, to keep feeding your children and keep providing them with like different music. And if they want to watch this Disney movie a hundred times, go take them a hundred times, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, I, I think um, I was really guided specifically and with a lot of love, so. Yeah. So there were two things that stood out to me initially in that statement. The first was um, your toys, which I had a conversation with uh, another guest. And one of the first things she said was how I played with my toys were different. What toys were you playing with and how okay. were you playing with them? Like, yeah. Uh, well, I had Barbies, of course, and my Barbies were fly. Okay. So they had everything that a Barbie could have. I had the Barbie dream house. I had the Barbie Corvette. Um, but I also had Legos. I remember mm. having Legos and seeing the colors and just like building things and just having fun, like placing the Legos on top of each other. And then there were Lego people. Uh, I had a, one of those little, I forget what they're called, but they were like compact, like doll houses. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah, I do remember those. And uh, you could place little people inside the little dollhouse. I thought it was the cutest thing. So I had mm -hmm. those. Um, yeah, but the Legos, I think, definitely stood out to me the most. Like, just being able to, like, pick up and play with them and just, like, maneuvering them. Um, but I don't, my Barbies had storylines. Like, my Barbies had storylines. They had friendships. They had boyfriends. They had things that they liked to do on the weekend, like, you know, going to the drive-in or and you know, just sitting had their own personality as well. They had their own they had their own personalities, you know what I'm saying? So being able to play, uh, and, and actually like that really helped me enjoy my alone time like even more, like as I grew up, just understanding like how you can create these different scenarios with these different characters and it could be a lot of fun. That that's interesting. I was um sort of the what kind of what kind of toys did yeah what kind of toys did you have? Oh man, I had everything. I was um huge huge in the action figures. So okay. I had like literally every action figure that you could want. All the Ninja Turtles, um, yeah, Power Rangers, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, Legos were huge for me too. Love um, Legos. I grew up mostly an only child, so I was the kid that had more toys than quote-unquote friends that I could play with okay okay true so I enjoyed um like a typical Saturday morning for me as an example when the 8 a.m cartoons come on after I destroy right. all the cereal right like, <laughs> me and my action figures and I would almost set mine up the same way as the show would so the show would always start off with uh the bad guys over here setting off a plot Meanwhile, the good guy's over here at the store hanging out with his friends, and this happens, and they've got to get from A to B, there's a chase. So I was making those storylines happen with all my action figures. Right. Um, with the Legos, I was the same kind of kid. You know, I would build whatever um, was I was supposed to build, and then I would keep the boxes. I kept all the boxes so that I could flip to the back of the box and then reconstruct the other designs and then eventually that turned into me making you know my own stuff after I built you know towers you know towers right 
So I, re I really like the different um, like pieces that came with the Legos. Like it wasn't just like stacking them, but they had like doors. You right. know what I'm saying? Different rooms, like furniture. You know what I'm saying? Like all these different things. You know, I definitely in retrospect, it was like you know, Legos is one of those toys that really inspires like sculpting and um, engineering. Yes. You know, spatial. Absolutely. Design. Yes. They're they're brilliant toys for um, creative kids to really get their hands and tinker with. Keep their hands busy. Mm -hmm. Mm. And it's one of those things like, you know, you have to use a little bit more mental dexterity with your, the dolls per se, because you have to really imagine out what they would do, what they would say. Mm. Versus with the Legos, you get the tactile, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, um, you know, really interesting to see what toys we gravitated to versus how we ended up using our hands, mm. our craft as adults. Mm. It's interesting. Like, I, I haven't really thought, I haven't really thought that much about that. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I, my, my mind is so interesting. Like, I remember certain things from my childhood and I remember certain things from my past. But because I think I'm just trying to download and just like, I'm trying to download and like just put all this energy out, you know, sometimes the memory can get lost. And so it's interesting, like you hearing, you know, hearing you talk about that is just making me think about um, how those two are different. Like it definitely takes more mental effort to put, you know, dolls in a certain scenario and for them to build friendships. And right. It's really and cool. Even, and even, you know, when you think about the, the overtime of that, you do that for maybe a day for five minutes with a toy, but then you think about someone who's carrying that storyline or that thought process mm. for a duration of time. Mm. You know, the, I mean, that's why we have shows like, you know, movies like Toy Story. You've now personified this toy past. Mm. what its original function was who is it to you what what does it mean or mm. what were you able to make with it like, um, mm. those are like crucial sort of storytelling you know um, things that we start to learn mm. when we're making television or we're making you know plays or that kind of stuff so it's um those beginning thought processes it's just a matter of how and what we merge mm. You smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But you smart. Well, I'm like, you am thinking, like, yeah. Speak. I think. Go ahead. I think one of the things that has allowed me to um, stay motivated as an artist is because I still have that childlike um, curiosity. Mm -hmm. I still have that spirit that wants to play, that wants to explore things, you know. And, and sometimes it, I can be a little bit of naive, like naive when I, you know, jump into certain situations, but it's still like coming from a good place. Yeah. So I, I definitely think that as an artist, well, I guess it depends on, you know, how you're creating and what you're creating, but I definitely think it's important to stay close to that inner child, you know. Mm -hmm. I, try to, uh, I try to be Robin Williams. And pain. I mean, I can uh, and hook. You know, I want to be the kid, the adult. You know, the kid that uh, I'm in adult's body, but I never actually fully right. slept. You know, right. That's probably really <laughs> interesting. That was one of my favorite movies as a kid. When we talk about Disney movies, mm. um, I loved Hook, but you know, watching it as an adult, it gave me a different, I guess, retrospection of what they were saying with that storyline. Mm. And it was, um, you know, Peter Pan the Man, you know, Pan the Man was like the most creative, the most um, imaginative child in all of Wonderland. And then he grows up to be a lawyer and mm. to entirely lose his identity in what society told you, has told you you're supposed to be right and then him having to go find his son mm. kidnapped by his arch nemesis that he's forgotten mm. 
he has to remember who he was and how to be the childlike self that was brave mm. creative because that's not who he is as an adult mm. so, you know the, the moral I took watching that you know when I was you know my mid-20s watching it for the first time again after being like eight was never lose the childlike sensibility that's mm. where, you know you cut off all the magic as they say mm. I feel that yeah. but I was going into um you were talking about smarts and um you slot one of the smart things <laughs> early was um start to sell your art when you were in mm. middle school and high school tell me about mm. first off what your influences were that got you to actually in repetition start yeah. to pick up the pen or the pencil and draw yeah. and yeah. then and where you found the confidence to start actually selling it that's a great question. So um, in elementary school, I remember just loving art class. Like it was almost as if that was the only thing I went to school for. When I was in art class, my eyes would just, just open wide and it's like I would just download everything and just couldn't wait until art class whether we were making like a cardboard, you know, what's that construction paper like okay. picture or whether we were painting. I loved it. And it, probably in middle school, um, I really started to see like, wow, I really love this. Oh, no, 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 no. Elementary school, I used to draw girls, like black girls with like big hips and like big tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. And I used to sell them on my bus for a dollar. Okay. And I was like, okay, so if I, okay, so boom. All right. So the day before I would make you know, three or four or five, sell them on the bus, and then I would have snacks, you know what I'm saying? Right. So at the lunch table, if you the kid with all the good snacks, you know what I'm Right, you were popular. <laughs> I, went, I went about it a different way, but I, I was definitely with you on the, on the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, let me go ahead and rack up on these snacks. And then I, and then I also remember, like, not going to the same person every day on the bus. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, sitting by other people, you know, just, that's so interesting. Oh my God. So just switching up, you know, who I'm around. It's kind of like networking now, right? You're not going to, right. you're not going to hit the same person up every day for the same thing. You got to learn how to move around. Right. So I would sit by this person one day, sit by that person the next day. And I, sometimes we didn't even have that close a relationship, but they knew I was drawing and they wanted to see what I had next. So I'd be like, okay, you know, right. so, um, so I took that there. And then the next time I can really remember selling things was in high school. I was designing tennis shoes. So I would buy like $5 sneakers from Walmart that were all white, you know, design them and then sell them for like $15, $20 at my school. And I would buy them for $5, right? So I was like, oh, okay. So, whoa, whoa. so I can not only buy snacks, I can go and buy clothes. I can buy shoes so I can be fly. Okay. And that's when like, I used to, um, I, can, I don't know where all of my shoes are. It's so crazy. Everybody used to call me Converse Kelly. Cause that's all I used to wear was Converse's. Mm -hmm. And you know, they used to be real cheap. They probably still are. I haven't bought none in a while, but they used to be like $30, sometimes 25, you know, at the mall I used to go to. So I was like, okay, let me sell some artwork, get some more sneakers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, knowing that I had a skill that could make me money and like, instead of, you know, wasting time, I could be working on this skill. I think I learned that really young. I think it's really awesome that I had that spirit in me that was just like, listen, while y'all over here doing that, I'm be over here learning this so I can have my snacks. Right. <laughs> so i'm i'm with it i was actually a, a child worker so i wasn't entrepreneurial i worked from very small um my parents uh, my dad owned a landscaping business so i started off very early on the truck with him as mm. gave you that work ethic 
like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I could work. Yeah, I don't want to now, but <laughs> <laughs> right, I could, I could definitely do a uh, long, long hours when I was in elementary. Oh, elementary school with like the big back pack blowers on my back, you know, on day mm. yeah holidays. So I was showing up with wild money, the same way you are. Uh, but from the labor side of it, not necessarily from the entrepreneurial aspect. I didn't really take art. I took it seriously. I think I was probably a better art student than I was any other student. Right. Um, I definitely heard you and you said you thought you went to school for art because I definitely didn't go to no other classes in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, right. you know, I think when you get that light early, uh, there's always something or someone that pushes you mm. to go harder. Mm. Uh, for me, it's with an art. You know, my, my uncle, my mother's brother, is like you. He can draw and he can paint. I mean, he's amazing. And I was enamored as a child watching him. Mm. Anything we saw on TV, make anything I could just tell them to draw something out of the air and it would be there in two three minutes right so that was like the catalyst that made me believe that I could do some type of art form even if mm. I could do that mm, right 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 <laughs> where where did you start to feel that catalyst because naturally there had to be a moment in your mind mm -hmm. that's clicking and mm -hmm. I'm gonna do dollar prints. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know if I can remember the exact point or the exact time. I just knew it was something that I really liked to do. You know, I think I I might have found something online and then sketched it and then you know colored it a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Another thing I remember uh, I remember in art class they would tell us, you know, if you want to get better at your skill, hang a piece of cloth on your wall and try and draw the different shapes and the shades and just, you know, learn that shape, learn the value of that and, um, you know, sketch different cloths. So I, now, it's so funny now that I'm talking about it. I remember being in my room, putting nails in the, in the wall, you know, and hanging up sheets, hanging up shirts, hanging up all types of things, and just sitting there watching a movie and just sketching it and just really falling in love with the process of understanding that I could recreate something. Like, I could create something with my hands. And, uh, you know, it's like finishing something that you love doing and having a completed painting or having a completed drawing. It feels so good, yeah. you know? I can imagine. I, uh, but did that feel good after the sore butt? Because I know you had to be getting whoopings. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why you thought I had to be getting whoopings? Because if I was putting holes in my mama's wall, I would definitely still be. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got whoopings for being for being rebellious. I didn't get I didn't get whoopings for for the holes. I, I get whoopings for being out too late. I get whoopings for. Um, you know, doing stuff in school I shouldn't be doing. I was, I was, I played a lot. I played a lot. I was the class clown. Um, I just loved just being loud and I'm just obnoxious and just having fun. Like that, that was my, um, that was definitely something that got me into trouble. And after school, I was always somewhere I shouldn't have been, mm -hmm. you know, so I, that's why I got whoopings. I didn't get whoopings for the holes in the wall. I don't think, like my mom was a single mother. She was tired when she came home from work. She had she cooked three things, right? She cooked either spaghetti, she cooked uh, fried chicken, or she cooked pork and beans. And that was it. And she would be in her room most of the time. My mom didn't come upstairs for nothing. So I had a lot of time, you know what I'm saying, to myself in my room doing all types of shit. She had no idea. So yeah. But t she was definitely very supportive of your art career because she was helping. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very much so. Um, so. When you start, like, looking at materials, 
like how did you come up to the shoes and then how did you come up with like what uh what paints to buy and then right. I, I figure that whole process out uh with the shoes i bought my first i bought a first pair about just you know for myself mm-hmm. and you know we didn't have a lot of money so i was like okay let me get these walmart shoes i think i got a black pair or a red pair i got lots of different pairs and just warm they kind of look like vans you know the shoes i'm talking about yeah 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 so i got those and um i got the white ones and i just designed them and they were really cute i went to school the next day and one of my friends she was like man those are cute can you make shoes on the basketball team she was like can you make some with me like but can you put basketballs on them i was like sure you know and then she warmed and other people were like oh i like your shoes they look you know custom shoes so i um once i got that 15 dollars from her i was like wow okay so i can go and buy three more shoes yeah, and I'm like, okay, so this is how it goes. I definitely learned how to um, budget, and I learned, like, what I needed. My mom bought me a lot of markers and paints and stuff, so I didn't really buy that. But right. the shoes, I had to, I had to, I had to work up some money for shoes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know nothing about material costs. It was all profit. <laughs> all profit. Hey, all checks. Okay. Mm. So, Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. It's it's interesting. Like um, like I said, since I worked more labor growing up, I didn't really understand any of that stuff either. Like I understood labor cost because I was being paid, and I understood right. so I other things. But right. You didn't really get the. I never really got the knowledge of how to start up a business. Mm same way you know what i'm saying right right so as you're doing your art stuff and your yeah. self shoes and clearly that's bringing popularity a little bit of appeal a little bit of confidence what are the mm-hmm. things you're doing um at that time period that was you know intersecting and, and giving you more of a push to go into this direction as an artist well i so, i mean so p- popularity is it, it, it's it is definitely subjective you know what i mean because i definitely knew a lot of people but i didn't necessarily have like a lot of close friends there was my sister and then like probably like two other people but other than that like i knew a lot of people but like i wouldn't necessarily call them all friends you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and um i definitely had a lot of people who supported my journey and i'm, I'm really grateful for that but I, I think that I just knew that I was different. At first, I didn't necessarily understand it, but art kind of gave me a way out of my head. You know, it kind of gave me um, direction after my homework so that I just didn't become the kid that just came home and just, you know, watched movies or video games and then it's over with. It kind of gave me something else, you know, to do. And I love projects. so. I also did a lot of theater, so I was acting, I went to church every Sunday, so I was singing in the choir, I did the bell choir. Have you have you seen a bell choir before? Ah, I've seen it on TV, I haven't done that in real life. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no, I have, I have, there, there's been some uh, holiday function or something where there's been a bell choir that I shot. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm at work, I don't really get to watch. <laughs> I'm either walking by it or filming it and going. Yeah. So that was interesting. That was definitely an interesting experience. I think, you know, doing theater and being so involved in my church and the bell choir and singing, I think uh, I was really surrounded by creativity in a very unique way Mm -hmm. and definitely encouraged, definitely supported. So that definitely affected my brain and just like do, 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 do. all the wiring is like okay you're just flowing you're gonna go to bell choir then you're gonna go to choir practice and then you're gonna come home and you're gonna draw a little bit and you're gonna do it over again and you said were you doing theater at the church or were you doing theater at school i was doing theater at school i was doing bell choir at church bell choir at church yeah bell choir yeah <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah i always think of a hershey's kiss commercial Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so at school, what type of plays were y'all doing? 
Yeah. We were doing uh, Cat in the Hat, you know, every holiday play, you know, like, you know, the Thanksgiving plays and stuff like that. I will always have like a good like portion of the play. So, um, you know, we did The Wiz in high school. I was, was Dorothy awesome. for that. Yeah, that was that was mine. I did that in uh, elementary school in sixth grade. I was scared. Yeah. What What did you play? I was a scarecrow. I had to be my There was no other. Ah, yeah. you were a scarecrow. <laughs> oh, I was a thing and dancing, acting. <laughs> so, you put you put me with a with a four count and, and some people to sit in my. <laughs> what was your costume like? My mom actually made my costume. There was uh, some okay. overalls, and she did some <laughs> ice paint. Actually, what's crazy is I actually think I still have the overalls because they were too big for me then. Yeah. Like, they were adult-sized overalls, and I was wearing them as a kid, I think. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> and then she had made, like, the, the straw. Like, what you see for, like, Halloween, the straw was coming out. And, uh, a little paper hat. <laughs> you can't win, child. <laughs> you can't win. No, you can't win, child. Yes, I can see it. <laughs> you can't was fun. And you can't yeah. get out of the game. Okay. What you say? Yeah. Things are gonna change. But they look like they're staying the same. Okay. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was a, a really big play. I, I think for me, I, as well as like for culture, um, I was the kind of kid that I changed schools a lot. I was well known, but I wasn't necessarily good popular or bad popular. You know, I could just go either way, depending on the day. Um, Were you a nerd? No. I would okay. say I was the misunderstood child. I was okay. I was energetic. I didn't take shit off anyone, so I was insubordinate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. Um, I was very straightforward. Like I was the type of person if you were honest with me and told me something and told me to do something, I would typically do it. If you didn't or I didn't feel you were being forthcoming with information or I didn't understand it. I mm. It didn't matter. Mm. Or right. I wasn't going to do it. So right. that, you know, leads people to think you're insubordinate. Uh, I leads people to think that you can't. You got a lot of energy and a lot of creative energy, and a lot of um, absorption as far as what you take in from your environment. I think uh, it's very easy for people to misunderstand you um, as a child is still developing. And they've been mm -hmm. all, you know, I was sort of socially awkward in some ways. I didn't, um, you see movies like Sandlot and like Mighty Ducks, where it's like that only child kid finds this group of friends, they become his friends. Mm -hmm. Never really worked that way. So it was more like a, uh, I'll be in a school, even though I'm still in the same area. I might be in the school, I'll make friends, and then next school year, something would change, be it zoning, or they didn't like the school or whatever, and I'm starting over. So right. consistently being in the same area, but sort of in new environments, constantly right. put me on the starting over. Right. Um, so arts were ways that I was able to very quickly make a place for myself. Mm. You know, you're selling prints for snacks. I'm like singing for solos to make friends with girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Because you were serenading them quick. I'm, you know, I'm serenading, you know, I'm serenading, you know uh, whenever there's a party or a, 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 what do you call them? A pep rally or something like that. One of the first ones to hit the dance floor, to go <laughs> some flips, to go do anything that's athletic and out over the top, you know? Yeah. I, I was with it. So I think creativity 
um, arts, most of the time, it can be a very non-judgmental place for people who um, don't necessarily have one box that they fit in. Mm-hmm. It's like um, like drama and, and uh, chorus did the same thing for me. Art did the same thing for me as far as, you know, not knowing exactly where you fit in, but just just having a good heart and just wanting to have a good time. And people who are creative, you know, they see that. And especially if you're skilled at what you do, you know, if you have a, if you have a unique skill and you, you join like a creative group, then I think it's really easy to um, connect with people. But then also like a lot of my journey was alone, like, I definitely still am a loner to this day. I'm definitely well connected. I have lots of associates, but I think that really stuck with me in my childhood as far as, you know, liking people, wanting to be included, right? Because everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to have people that they can rely on and people that they can trust. But they're also understanding everybody doesn't think like me. Everybody doesn't, everybody doesn't have my same energy. Everybody isn't as giving. So I just, as much as I want to explore and um, have all of these different relationships, it's kind of like a way in which we protect ourselves. You know what I mean? As far as, um, cause communicating with people, especially people who do not understand you can be draining. It can be exhausting. Very much so. and, and I am not the type of person that will connect with you just so I'm not bored. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want to have a genuine connection. And if it's not a genuine connection, I'm okay with being alone, honey. I got lots of stuff. I got lots of stuff I can do. I enjoy my imagination. So it's cool when the art space does, you know, provide a space for loners or misfits or just whatever. People who have not had the opportunity to, you know, have a central friend group, it allows them to come together. And I think that's really awesome. Right. 